Hi, apartment therapy. Welcome to my 350 square foot cottage in Philadelphia. I am a teacher and I've been living in this cottage since summer of 2019. Before I moved into this space, I had recently gone through a divorce and I was looking to really live alone again for the first time in a decade. And I was spending a lot of time thinking about what kind of space felt like me. I was really nervous about these yellow walls. I considered painting before I moved in because I wasn't sure how it was going to all work, but these walls really spoke to me in a way that made me feel like I needed to lean in to the bright yellow and the light fixtures that are all colorful. I guess this is the season of my life where I'm gonna live out this cottage, floral, burst of energy and happiness and go with it while I'm in this space. The layout was the biggest challenge in this space because there are so many windows that there's not a ton of places where you can fit a bed. And I really don't like putting big furniture in corners because it just feels like it closes off the space. So I knew that I was going to want to float my bed from the one wall where it would actually fit. I also wanted to make sure that when I was working from home, my students didn't see my entire space from where I was working. So I wanted to sort of tuck away in a little corner. When I do entertain, it often means tucking things away. I get creative. I put things in my microwave, I put things in the dryer, I put things in the shower, just so that I can feel like if I'm in the middle of some kind of project, that that stuff can be out of the way. The bathroom in my place is, is pretty great. It has a bathtub, which is awesome. I didn't expect. There's also room in there for a shelf so I can keep a lot of my items stored in there pretty nicely. Birdie wants to be free. She's a bird and she would love to leave this she shed and explore the great outdoors, but I don't think that would end well for her. So. I try to give her a lot of time on the porch, and during the pandemic, I also started taking her on a leash in the yard, and she can climb trees and see what's out there. I'm sort of mortified that that has become a habit, but she really likes it, and it beats chasing her because she's escaped on her own volition. So I'd rather take her outside safely than chase her around the yard. She is a magnet for certain fabrics, like velours and velvets and things like that. So I tend to try to get swatches of fabrics before I buy anything. I will often just take a swatch and rub it all over her to see what it does. The bird chair is a piece of furniture I've had since my grandmother passed away almost 15 years ago. And that was a chair that I had reupholstered when I moved to Philadelphia. To me, organization is secondary. I think that you really need to edit and re-edit your belongings. Getting rid of so many of my possessions when I went through my divorce and moving into this space really made me have new insight about how much meaning we ascribe to objects. And I kind of have like moved into a phase where I'm much less sentimental about stuff. And that makes it much easier to edit and donate and give something to a friend. I use the under bed storage mostly for clothes that are out of season, sheets, and bags. I have a dresser in my closet. It's nice that I can't fit all of my clothes in my closet because it forces me twice a year at least to sort of take everything out, look at it, and decide if it is worth keeping it because it takes up valuable real estate. I have a chest of drawers that I previously have used for clothes and other spaces, and it now houses spices, linens for the kitchen, and I love it. But it's sort of funny because people wouldn't expect for a drawer of spices to be right beside my closet. I have lockers out on the porch that have a ton of stuff in them that I just don't use day to day. So I try to really sort the once a month or seasonal items to the porch and I keep the everyday stuff inside the house. 
Books have always been something that I have moved with me from New York to Chicago, from Chicago to Philly, and I realized that I could not take my entire book collection here, but I still really wanted bookshelves in my space. I tried thinking of installing floating shelves. I looked at various bookcases. It was going to take up so much wall space or real estate that I didn't want to lose, and I just became okay with having them stacked in the corner. And I will have a bookshelf again someday, but I don't right now, and that's fine. <laughs> Lego became my rain on the table activity during COVID, and now I'm left with the problem of having a bunch of Lego sets as a 40-year-old woman that I don't really have anywhere to store. Um, <laughs> But for now, they remind me, you know, that if there's ever a stressful time in my life, it's always an option to to do a build. I guess there is a sort of alchemy that happened with changes that happen in my personal life and moving to this space that sort of there is this parallel experience of editing down on my possessions and relationships. I thought that that meant that I was going to only wind up with a little bit of what was left of my old life. But in the process, I've realized that I've really created a new life for myself. And this cottage has really been sort of the foundation for that evolution.